All right, so this one has calcium fluoride in magnesium sulfate. Magnesium, neither magnesium nor sulfate, sulfate appear in the formula of calcium fluoride, so it's not a common ion problem. Uh, also, the magnesium sulfate, sometimes if you write the problem like this, say you're adding the acid or a base, that could also change the solubility of it. But magnesium sulfate is not an obvious acid or base either. So it's not one of those kind of problems. So this is just some random ions we're adding in the solution. Random ions can cause the activity coefficient to change from one to some other number. We are always assuming that the activity coefficient gamma is one. So if it's not one, we have to take it into account. And so that's this kind of problem. So if you didn't know that from noticing magnesium sulfate is just some random, some random ions, you could have noticed it from seeing that uh, the activity coefficients are given. So you just have to use them if they're given. So you just kind of, so magnesium sulfate is just there? You, that's right. <laughs> the, when you increase the uh, ionic charge in uh, a solution, that will cause the activity coefficients to change. Basically, if you're adding ions, even if they're totally different, that'll change the activity coefficients. See, normally these would be one. But with those other ones in there, they're not one anymore. And so now you have to take them into account. If that wasn't in there, the activity coefficient should be one, and you totally ignore everything and just do it as, as normal. So most of this we're going to do as normal. So you'll still do an ice table, because you still want, you still ask for the molar solubility of this. So to get molar solubility, you do that. You know this is zero, zero plus x, plus 2x, because of the 2f, and then x and 2x. So the e line is just the sum of the i and the c lines. So that part is totally normal. Then, here's where things get a little funny. So I guess they're getting funny, I'll change colors. OK, so purple. K, S, P, normally, we'd write this. We're not going to write that now because we're dealing with activities. Truly, we should be writing this activity of calcium and the activity of fluorine squared. It's really we're using activities. That's why there's no units because activity doesn't have units. And what does activity mean? This means uh, gamma of calcium 2 plus times calcium 2 plus concentration times the gamma, uh, which is the activity coefficient, again, of fluorine squared times fluorine squared. So it adds in front of each concentration a gamma, and that gamma is raised to the same power. So gamma is the first, like calcium, gamma squared, just like fluorine. And those are just numbers now. So however you want to do them, you can pull them out. Some people do this. They'll put gamma of calcium times the gamma of fluorine squared, and then we'll go the calcium 2 plus, and then we'll write the other side like normal. And again, these two, we're usually assuming that all this stuff is one. So that's why we're ignoring it. In all problems except this one, this quarter. So now you just plug in. So gamma of calcium, that's given 0 0.485. It's going to be a unitless number that's going to be between 0 and 1. Gamma of fluorine is 0 0.810 squared. Calcium, uh, that's x. And fluorine from the ice table is 2x squared. So you're going to have the 0 0.485, uh, the uh, 0 0.810 times 4x cubed. Uh, and this is 3.9 times 10 to the minus 11. So there's only one unknown, that's x. And so you go solve for x, which you don't need a quadratic, just solve for it. Did, uh, did you forget the um, q.8? Did. Oh, I squared. I mean skew. Yeah, thank you. And x is the molar solubility of calcium for it. Is that okay? Or, okay.